you were innovation advisor uh, under Hillary Clinton when she was uh, Secretary of State. And as part of this job, I mean, you traveled all the time and you were able to come out and say, this I believe is the industry of the future. This is what we can't afford not to pay attention to. So what does the future look like 10 years down the road? What's some of the most exciting innovation you see? Robotics. You know, robots are not something that we necessarily think of as being particularly mainstream and in life at home or at work. But what I saw in South Korea, in China, in Japan led me to believe that the robots of the cartoons and movies of from the 1970s are going to be the reality of the 2020s. What does that look like? I mean, in the book you speak specifically about humanizing robots. You talk about robots displacing cognitive labor. I mean, this is far beyond a robot kind of helping out while cleaning the floor. The scary thing is that now, because of artificial intelligence, robots will increasingly be able to do work that is cognitive and non-routine. That kind of work done by, let's call it a low-level white-collar worker, that involves some cognition, but also a lot of repetition, I think is gonna be done through automation and by robots pretty soon. You talk about the, the language translator, right? And how this could one day be the equivalent of kind of like the coal mining job. You know, this could be on its way out. Can you just explain what you meant by it? Sure, so on the language translator, this is one of my crazier ideas. Uh -huh. Some people think I'm wrong. I think I'm gonna be right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I believe in, in 10 years, it'll be the case uh, Lori, that if you were speaking French to me, and I didn't speak French, I, I could put a little earpiece in my ear, and at this, literally at the speed of sound, uh, your voice measuring the frequency, wavelength, and sound intensity of your specific voice would be translated from French to English and would be whispered into my ear. When we look at areas of innovation that will shape the future economy, where do you think the most disruption is going to happen? I think the most disruption is going to come from the commercialization of genomics. I think that we're now between three and five years away from being able to do designer drugs that address the specific genetics of our body and the specific illnesses in our body. You also talk about that gray area of technology. There's so much exciting innovation, but for all this innovation, there are really tough questions we have to ask ourselves. You talk about maybe designer babies. Are we, are we personalizing so much that we are shaping the future in a way that might be a little bit daunting? Yeah, what we will know very shortly is when a baby is between weeks four and eight of pregnancy, so really early, We'll be able to know more than whether it's just a boy or a girl. We'll be able to know things like, oh, it's a boy and he's gonna have curly brown hair. He's gonna be about five foot eight. He's gonna have a 13% chance of getting Parkinson's. He's gonna have a 9% chance of, of being an alcoholic. In this, the kind of genetic material, the markers we're gonna be able to get uh, is mind blowing. And it's really scary. So the question is, with that information, what do you do? Imagine if you said, oh, well, I don't know if I want a son who's only five foot four, or ooh, you know, 15% chance of being an alcoholic. I don't know if that's a baby I want to bring to term. So in the midst of all of this scientific and technological development, our human values will never be more important.